Good morning, everyone. Well, it's not morning anymore, but how are you today? How are you today? So excited to be here for a really exciting topic. And I know a lot of you jazz singers are excited to learn about improvising when you sing jazz. Now, um, improvising, it's also known as scatting, right? It's a vocal improvisation with, with no words. It's more, more just using syllables, nonsense syllables without words at all. And in scat singing, the singer improvises melodies and rhythms. You sort of create other melodies when you are, imp it's actually like composing, right? On the spot is what it is. So it requires that you, um, you, you're pretty free when you are scatting and that you know you can hear where you're going and you know what, what to do, right? But that takes a little time. It's, uh, yeah, and the rhythms and using the voice as an instrument. That's what it's all about. We, um, we, we try to imitate how an instrument sounds rather than a speaking me medium. Now, some people improvise just on the melody. That means the melody, they change the melody, they may change the length of some words, or they might uh, take another note that's not in the melody, but it's going to be in the chord structure for sure, because if it's not in the chord structure, meaning if you know if you if you go through the chords, if it's chords not there, then it's gonna sound wrong, right? So, so structure and syllable choice. Though scat singing is improvised, the melodic lines are often variations of scales and chords. That means like scales, for example, uh, if I take Fly Me to the Moon. So actually this whole melody on Fly Me to the Moon is built on, on scale fragments. Da, 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 da. And then if I just go down, I'm back to F again. Just part of the F, F major scale, right? Fly me to the Whoops. Fly me to the And let me All 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 parts of a scale. A scale la, da, 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 da. part of that scale da, 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 da. so just that you know where to start when you improvise i tell my students first of all don't start scatting until you have a little bit of background right? You know how to sing the melody. You know how to groove the melody. That means having the right phrasing when you sing the melody. Like if I sing fly, I mean, let's just do it in this key. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. So you can hear I'm swinging it, right? And if you don't know how to swing the tune, then you're not going to be able to phrase it. And it does take some time. And I always tell my students, start snapping on two and four when you sing the melody. So learn the melody as it is written. So I'm already starting to use syllables instead of words, which is a good beginning of having uh, showing you how to improvise. So... And also, all of the instrumentalists, they, uh, they use stock patterns, they use riffs, they use uh, little quotations from, from other songs, which is really, really cool because you're doing it on the spur of the moment, right? Which means, oh, you bring another, another part of a song in that really fits into the chord structure. That's pretty cool. Ella does that quite a bit. As a matter of fact, Scatting usually incorporates musical structure. All of Ella's uh, scatting is like, for example, How High the Moon. Um, use, use the same tempo. Begin with a chorus of a straight reading of the lyric, 
moving to specialty chorus, introducing the scat chorus, and then the scat itself. So there is a system of building up your scat. First of all, you're going to sing the melody. Then you might uh, do another chorus of just changing the melody, changing some notes. And then she goes into a scatting, which is the use of syllables, right? And she uses the emphasis on the backbeat, which is, um, and offbeats, and, which is sn snipping of two and four to get the singer, get it, to get you a get a better phrasing one. Like if you're, if you're snipping on one and three, it's not going to groove. Fly me to the moon. No groove in that. Ah, la, 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 la. This is the, this is putting the emphasis on the one and the three. So if I put the emphasis on the one and the two and the four. Fly me to the moon. Ba -da -ba -ba. So you feel the difference of the groove already. Now, why is this also important for, for improvising? Um, because you have to have the feeling of the rhythm to improvise. You have to have a, a, a feeling for the form. What is the form? The form is where it is, is, for example, when a song has uh, one A part called A, it has eight bars, and then you have another section of the song that sounds the same. It repeats. It's going to be an A. And then you go into the new section, it's going to be uh, called the B or the bridge. Then you go into the last part of the song, it's going to be an A. Now, this is not always this form. We're going, you always keep, can either have an A-A-B-A -A -A form or an A-B form or an A-B-C form. All depends on the musical structure of the song. So what is important is for you to listen to instrumentalists. Now, I even got a lot of solos from... Um, Oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh, we have, what's his name? Well, a lot of stuff. I learned all the melodies, all of the, um, uh, the, the improvisations from Miles Davis. I have a whole CD here of just his transposed uh, uh, solos. So I learned his solos to hear what he was doing. Now that is for a little more of the advanced singers among you. Uh, if you really want to, you know, really dig into improvising, I'm just giving you now the first fundamental um, starting points. But later on, you want to really get into listening to the instrumentalists and um, copying what they're doing so that you get it's sort of like getting patterns in your head. So you know what what to do, um, you know how they're 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 improvising and you, you learn from it. Chet Baker is a perfect guy to, to take a look at and, and, and learn his, his solos off by heart. And the form of a song I just explained is A-A-B-A -A -A or A-B or A-B-C. But the thing is, um, it's divided up into bars, right? So you're going to have a two-bar phrase. Ba -ba -do -ba -da -ba -do -ba -da -ba -do -da. So you feel that's a little package, isn't it? What you could do is also have a four-bar phrase, but you could not have a five-bar phrase. Why not? Because it doesn't fit. It's not going to feel, feel complete when you improvise. So you have to either use two bars, four bars, eight bars, 16 bars, or 32 bars, right? If you're going to improvise over the whole form. And in the beginning, you want to, for, for people just starting out, you want to improvise over two-bar phrases just so you can, you know, where's the melody? You always have to have the melody in your ear. And to do that, um, you need to be singing the melody with, this is what I teach my students, singing the melody with the, uh, with the syllables, just basic, basic syllables to start off with so you get a feeling for the rhythm. Um, so the deliberate choice of scat syllables is also a key element in vocal jazz improvisation. Syllable choice influences the pitch articulation, the coloration, and the resonance. And of course, the emphasis on offbeats gives you a feeling of the groove. So um, 
we're going to go in. I'm going to show you what I teach my students uh, to start off in improvising to make it really easy. You want to make it easy, guys. But there is a system. There is a system of learning how to improvise. Like when I first started out, and I was in a master class from uh, Rufus Reed, and he really, he really took me in and said, "Girl." you got to sit down and learn well for me because i you know i'm a professional so i he expects some advanced uh methods advanced uh stuff from me and he said you got to learn the chords and he told me i had to play piano you guys don't have to do that if you're just starting out and you know you're maybe you're not planning to become a professional but if you're going to become professional it would be pretty good to get a little bit of this background um, background knowledge behind you to be able to at least play the melody on the piano, to know the chords, to know the different chord families. By the way, I go, I'm going into all of this, this um, information in my upcoming 10 week uh, course, Swinging Jazz Mastery Program, starting on Monday. So if this is something that you would really like to master with improvising, and we're going to be doing 10 songs during the course, so you will have a whole repertoire ready to perform when you're finished with the 10-week course. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, and they will, you'll find out um, all the, how, how to improvise, and I'm going to be, uh, you know, holding you hand, on your hand, showing you the way taking a look at your at your uh, videos and and all of your your um, improvised stuff that you're going to put in the group and give you feedback on it so you're going to be guided um yeah syllable choice is differentiated by jazz singers personal styles so betty carter she's an absolute amazing take a look at what she's doing betty carter she was more louis louis la 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 soft tongue sounds uh, on on the on the on the melody, while Sarah Vaughan preferred shooby dooby dooby doo bop, fricatives and explosives and open vowels. Uh, the choice of scat syllables can also be used to reflect the sounds of different instruments. Right, so maybe you're trying to sound like a trumpet, and that's what a lot of singers do because you can take your microphone and start it. <laughs> start sounding like an instrument like a, a trumpet. So that that's really cool. If you want to try that, just take your microphone and get right, right, right close to the microphone and just try singing some different notes. Hey, Joyce, how are you? You just try, um, you know, listening, getting that microphone and trying out some different notes as as you as a trumpet player would play it and you start to get in the feeling of an instrumentalist and that's what we want to do we want to sound like an instrument so and um uh, ella for example she was she sounded more like the big bands of the of that time so she was improvising she had a different style of improvising but i'm going to show you today just one simple start um, there are different methods of learning how to, how to, um, how to improvise. And it looks like, okay. There, first of all, you want to learn the melody. That's really important. Doesn't it drive you crazy when the singer alters the melody, taking melodic liberty, starting with the first? Yes, absolutely, Joyce. First of all, you do not improvise the first chorus of singing the song. You have to introduce the song, right? You introduce the song and you sing the melody and you sing it pretty well as it was written. Now you're going to, people are going to, are going to inter interpret that differently. Some people are going to, you know, make one word longer. Like you can sing, for example, fly me to the moon, fly me to the moon, or I can sing fly me to the moon, or I can sing it Fly me to, fly me to the moon. Oh, that was the same, wasn't it? Fly me to the moon. And you can make, you know, you can rhythmatize the, the, um, the phrase how you want to do it. But you should keep the melody in the first round. And by the second melody, you can start changing the melody. Right? That's where you can start changing the melody. You do not do it in the first chorus. A chorus, by the way, is when you go through the whole song 
And usually a song has 32 bars, right? And that's how they set up the form. By the way, this is so exciting, which I really loved when I was studying um, harmony and theory is it's all about math, right? Like even the notes are like a three, bar, three, three quarter bar, three, four bar, four, four bar, uh, five, four bar. It all has to do with, with rhythmic. Isn't that cool? And of course, the, the form also has to do, you, you know, if you have a, a form of 32 bars, I, th I find this really extremely exciting to learn about this stuff. But you do have to have a feeling for the form if you're going to improvise. You just can't take it off. And like, as I was telling you, uh, Rufus Reed said, said to me, oh, you're just winging it, like you're winging it like most people do. You just start and take the, the just do whatever you know the, the the sky is telling you to do you have no idea what you're doing you don't have any background you're just winging it well that's okay for the beginning but if you really wanted to create a good improvisation you have to you have to know a little bit about what you're doing so what what do we want to do you either sing syllables i'm going to show you a really simple syllables on a melody start learning the the baseline of the song now i'm not going to go into all that today we're learning this in in my 10-week course and please join us if you if this is exciting for you and then of course what else what else do we can we do we sing the baseline and we can also take a guideline based on the, on the third of the first chord of the song so if I, I'm not going to go. I'm not even going to show you this because if you're interested in this, you come on over to our course. And I've been teaching this in my two last two free courses. So I've been giving away a lot of free material, and the four four week course just ended now. So let us take the melody of "Fly Me to the Moon." So I'm just going to play it here, and I'm going to snap on two and four to get that groove right. One. A two and this is by the way how you should be counting the band in for the most part sometimes you're just going to do one two three four but generally speaking you're going to count the band in like this one two a one two three four fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars let me see what spring is like on two in other words, hold my hand. In other words, God and kiss me. So we're just doing the first part of the song, and this this has a form of A B. So let's just take the melody and put some syllables to them. Some real simple syllables. Now, this is just for the beginning, guys. Afterwards, you're going to take your own syllables. You're going to create your own melodies. You're going to create your own sounds. But from the beginning, just to give you a feeling for it, we're going to start with one, two, three. Ba ba do ba da ba do ba da ba do da. Maybe you can say that with me. Ba ba do ba da ba do ba da ba do da. I even have it back here behind me but you guys can't see it well maybe you can can you see that bob let me see one second maybe you can see that ba ba do ba da ba do ba da ba do da and just continue doing that over the melody it's simple but you start to get a feeling for the rhythmical creation of a and then inspira inspiration it is inspirational uh, for an improvisation right ba ba do ba da ba do ba da ba do da so why did i take that because i'm emphasizing on some off beats which makes the groove better ba 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 that's an off beat ba ba do ba do ba do these are off beats right so that is going to create more excitement in your improvisation. So let's just do that on the melody. One, two, three, four. Ba ba do ba da ba do ba da ba. Ba da ba da ba ba da ba do ba da ba. Ba ba do 
So, that's how you get a feeling for the form. Yeah, I love Betty Carter, too. She was amazing, wasn't she? Just loved her. And she just did everything her own way. I was, she, you know, really looked up to her for that. She went, didn't care what anybody said. So if that's just the very, very, very beginning, I, I'm not planning on doing a whole, whole um, training here. I'm just doing a live to let you guys, you know, get an idea of what you can do to, um, to uh, start using your improvisation. So if I do this again, bop. now what will happen afterwards, after you practice this with the melody, bop, one, one, two, three. Ba, ba, do, ba, da, ba, do, ba, da, ba. You can hear I'm phrasing it already. I'm already phrasing and putting emphasis on offbeat. Ba, 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 right? So one of my afterwards, after you practice this on the melody, one, two, then you're going to do something. You're going to leave some notes out. You're just going to maybe bring some other notes in, right? But it just gives you a basis, a fundament to build on. That's what we need, right? When you're starting out, you don't have no clue what to do. I didn't. I just took, that's what, what Rufus Reed said to me. He said, girl, you're like a submarine. You know, you can, you really hear everything because I got a really good, I have a very good um, hearing. I have what we call relative speech. It's not perfect speech, but if I hear a melody a couple of times, I, I sort of, um, save it in my brain and I can, I'll sing that the next time in that key. So here's what we could do. For example, one, two, three. Ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, do, ba. And I can use part of a scale. Ba, ba, do, ba, da, ba, do, ba, da, ba. Ba, da, ba, 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 da, da. So I'm still using melody there. Ba, ba, da, so I'm bringing in some other notes. So, ba, ba, do, ba, da, ba. That's the fourth. Ba, ba, do, ba, da, ba. So that's they, these are little steps that you take on the way, right? To bring in different notes into your improvisation that fit to the chords, right? So if I'm playing... If I'm playing the chord, let me have a look here. If I can play this. Um, no, it's back down here. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. So those chords, and that's where we come to the next point. If you know the bass line of the chord, then you are going to have some stability when you're improvising once you get away from singing the melody. So if I'm just if I'm if I'm just uh, gonna sing the um, the bass line and it goes like this. Mm -hmm. If I'm singing the melody, you'll you'll hear the, the bass line below it. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars let me see what spring is like on jupiter and mars in other words hold my hand so you can hear that melody is connected to the bass line and if the bass line is the chord it's the bass line of the chord that is being uh, played in that song, right? So if I am singing just the bass line, let me see if I can, let's see if I can get this around here, and I will play melody, the, 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 um, ba, ba, ba. So 
these are the baseline of those chords. This is the baseline, for example, of the first chord is a F major. La, la, la. So I'm teaching all this in the 10 week course, guys. I'm so excited because I love, I love teaching. I love teaching you guys. I love seeing how you um, you um, start to open up your voice and start to improvise and start to sing the melody and groove the melody and get that rhythm. And it's just so exciting, right? And so um, this is more or less. I'm not going to go into any more because you know I don't want to overwhelm you. The next thing that you can do is start to starting off with the third of the chord. I just told you, it's, a, it's a, a F major, F major chord. And if I start off on the third and just take the melody very close to, to that first note and just let it flow, it's what we call a guideline, let it flow through the, the song. I'm just gonna show it to you. Okay, where am I, where am I? So this is the third. La, 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 I know I can hear now where I'm going. I know which chords. Well, I may not know exactly what chord I'm uh, we're, we're doing at that time, but I am taking that one note is very, very close to home. And so I don't get lost. We don't want to get lost when we're improvising, right? The instrumentalists, they seem to always know what they're doing. And we singers, most singers, they get up there and they don't have a clue what's going on. So it's really important, guys. It's so important to get a little bit of background information on what you do when you get up on stage, you know, to have your key and be able to count the band in and have your chart finished, ready. Because singers have a bad name for a lot of musicians. Like they really make jokes about, about singers because they don't know anything that's going on. You have to become a musician as a jazz singer, not just a jazz singer, but you have to become a musician like the rest of the instrumentalists. They are musicians, right? And yeah, of course they can, they can read chords and they probably know how to read some, some uh, of the, of the notes. But why do singers feel that they don't have to learn the theory? Why? It's so much fun to learn the theory. It's so much fun to learn, to learn, for example, the different chord uh, families, a major chord, a minor chord, a half diminished chord, and a diminished. But now we're getting on into a little more uh, advanced stuff. So, and I do not recommend you starting out to improvise I don't know where my voice is coming from. I do not suggest you starting out uh, to start improvising right away. I know that you guys love to do it, and a lot of colleagues um, encourage you to improvise right away. I do not encourage that. I want you to get a nice, big, fat note when you're singing, to be able to sing that melody in tune with the right vocal techniques and the right breathing, because you, you can apply that to any other, other song that you're going to be working on, right? If you learn that right for one song, you can apply that to other songs. Ah, I could go on forever, guys. I just love this stuff. So if you feel excited and, and, and would like to continue and learn about how to become an amazing jazz singer, um, then you can join my, my course. If you're interested, just put a me in the, in the chat below and we'll send you some information. So this has been so much fun with you. So nice to see Joyce here today, sending you love, Joyce, and wishing you all a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I say now, bye-bye until the next time. Oh, tomorrow we're doing another, another live, um, which, which, which is, uh, I, even, I don't even know the, the title of it. Elfie will tell us. I think it's about now that 
what's your next level? Where are you going to go from net, from where you are? Is it time for you to start thinking about getting some help? Yeah, this is just my last word, uh, guys. If you're going to learn piano, you get a teacher. If you're going to learn how to ski properly, you're going to get a teacher. Are you ready for the next level to develop your jazz voice? Exactly. If you're going to learn anything, um, you can, you can, you know, sort of wing it like I did in the beginning, but I didn't do it too long because I went, as soon as I heard uh, the first chords of Con Alma with Dizzy Gillespie, um, that was it for me. And I went off and, and, and immediately thought, where can I get help? How can I learn this stuff? And I started uh, at the university in every course, every course that I could get my hands on, whether it was in, in uh, Innsbruck, in, 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 in um, Switzerland, or I even went to a course in, uh, up to America. Well, of course, you have to invest in yourself. You know, it costs money uh, to um, take that flight over there, and it costs money for the courses, and it costs money for lessons, and, you know, but either you're really, really, uh, uh, this is something important for you, and you'll do it, or maybe it's just something, you know, just a little hobby on the side, then obviously you're not going to put your time and effort and money into that. Think about what do you really want with your singing. And we'll see you tomorrow with this wonderful topic. Are you ready for the next level of your jazz singing? Take care, my loves. See you tomorrow, one o'clock. Bye.